The Blues Brothers, a classic 1980 musical comedy helmed by director John Landis, is celebrated for its distinctive fusion of comedy, music, and captivating acting, with John Belushi portraying Jake Blues and Dan Aykroyd as L. Wood Blues, the movie chronicles their uproarious journey to rescue their childhood orphanage by putting their band back together. Facts Buddy presents this scene was not edited. Look again at the Blues Brothers blooper. Was the script supervisor asleep? The film boasts impressive editing and seamless transitions, but upon closer inspection, several continuity errors become apparent. Let's dissect these scenes for the bloopers they contain. In one instance, troopers Daniel and Mount pull over the Blues Brothers in front of a house with specific car placements. But later, as Mount returns to the cruiser post-speeding Blues Mobile, the surroundings change, with the absence of cars and a different landscape. Following the detonation of L. Woods Hotel, the state trooper's car undergoes a transformation, losing its light bar, possibly as a mark of respect. Before the hotel explosion, orchestrated by the mystery woman, the police car's rooftop light bar and antenna are intact. However, a quick glimpse before the blast reveals inconsistencies, with the car appearing unmarked, lacking the usual equipment, and seeming hastily taped over. During the Palace Hotel concert, a female extra's position in the audience shifts, initially positioned to the left of the catwalk, then moving to the right in one shot, before returning to her original place. Following a collision between police and the truck carrying the good old boys, the wreckage changes location between scenes, despite initially coming to a halt post-impact. Upon entering Bob's country bunker, the arrangement of pinball machines against the wall changes from a row to separate locations by the end of the scene. In the mall chase sequence, the Bluesmobile's door windows inconsistently alternate between being rolled up and down, particularly noticeable during crashes into glass like the Oldsmobile dealership window. For instance, Elwood's window is up during the collision, but later, after a comment about new Oldsmobiles, the window inexplicably rolls down again. These are just a few examples of the continuity errors peppered throughout the film, highlighting the challenges of maintaining consistency in the editing process. The Blue Brothers Trivia In the iconic finale of The Blues Brothers, there's a captivating cameo by Joe Walsh, the renowned singer and guitarist, who sports his signature long hair and mustache. He kicks off the jailhouse rock sequence by being the first prisoner to hop onto a table and start dancing. Following their electrifying performance, the Blues Brothers find themselves chased by state troopers all the way back to Chicago. This intense pursuit, culminating in trooper vehicles crashing off a highway embankment, was filmed on a secluded section of Illinois State Highway 53 in Palatine, Illinois. Achieving the desired effect of cars flipping over during the descent presented a challenge for the crew. Their solution involved digging a hole into the embankment, facilitating the car's flips upon impact. Interestingly, to keep the cast and crew alert during overnight shoots, Kokina found its way into the movie's budget. According to Dan Aykroyd, John Belushi particularly embraced this aid, believing it enhanced his performance. Aykroyd's original script was notably extensive, spanning over 300 pages and initially conceived as a two-part epic. However, director John Landis opted to streamline it into a standalone film. As a playful nod to the script's length, Aykroyd had it bound using the covers of the L.A. Yellow Pages. During the soundtrack recording, Cab Calloway was asked to re-record his hit track, Minnie the Moocher, at a higher quality than the original album. Despite Calloway's inclination towards performing the disco version, the filmmakers insisted on the original rendition, albeit reluctantly obtained from him. The dance scene outside Ray's music exchange, featuring a lively street crowd, contrasts with the reality of a bitterly cold day, with temperatures around 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Despite the intended summer setting, participants were bundled up against the chill. The Blues Brothers was one of the most expensive films produced at the time, boasting a budget of $30 million. 
In comparison, Steven Spielberg's 1941 had a budget of $35 million, leading to rumors of a friendly competition between Landis and Spielberg to outspend each other. Interestingly, both directors made cameo appearances in each other's films, which also featured shared cast members like Dan Aykroyd, John Belushi, and John Candy. The film's investment ultimately paid off, demonstrating its ability to draw audiences as long as the Blues Brothers were on a mission from God. Despite its comedic tone, the Blues Brothers touches on darker themes, notably the subplot involving the Nazis. Inspired by real-life events, the film's portrayal of the Nazis mirrors a historical incident from the mid-70s. In Skokie, Illinois, the Nazi Party of America planned a march, sparking outrage in the significant Jewish population, including Holocaust survivors. Despite legal battles, the Supreme Court upheld the Nazis' right to assemble, leading to their rallies in Chicago instead. The scenes in The Blues Brothers mocking the Nazis serve as a commentary on the real-life groups influencing Illinois during that era, particularly drawing from the Skokie incident to highlight the absurdity of their beliefs. The Legacy of the Blues Brothers Over the years, the Blues Brothers has retained its enduring popularity through frequent broadcasts on TV, availability on home media, and circulation on the Internet. Memorable scenes such as the exhilarating car chase in the mall and the electrifying performances at the Palace Hotel Ballroom remain widely shared online. The film's influence extends beyond mere entertainment, inspiring musical acts and fashion trends alike. The iconic black suits, fedoras, and sunglasses donned by the Blues Brothers have become synonymous with the movie. Similarly, the Blues Mobile, a weathered former police car, holds a significant place in cinematic history. Blues Brothers is renowned for its unique blend of comedy, music, and social commentary. Its satirical approach to contemporary issues like urban decay and political corruption lends it a depth appreciated by audiences. However, its sequel, Blues Brothers 2000, released in 1998, received a more mixed reception, with the absence of John Belushi, who passed away in 1982, being particularly notable. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite scene from the Blues Brothers movie? Let us know in the comments section below.